Hello, I'm Maria. I'm from Boxmore Yoga and we're going to do some chair yoga today and this is for the Decorum Fun Palace which is going on on the 3rd of October 2020. Now to do chair yoga you don't need a lot of space at home but uh, you do need the right sort of chair and I'd also like you to see if you can find something like a golf ball or a tennis ball because we're going to be using these as well. Now the sort of chair you have is it's best if it's a nice, sorry, you'll see me because I'll be sitting down, but it's best if you're on a nice hard sort of kitchen chair because you can sit well in a chair like this. If you're in an armchair like this red one here, then you're going to be slumped backwards and the only way that you can really sit upright is to either sort of be straining away or even if you sit on the edge of your chair and sit upright, your knees are higher than your hips. So if you can find a solid chair that means you can sit with your knees a little bit lower than your hips and sit towards the edge of the chair so that your feet are flat on the floor as well then that's going to be the best chair that you can sit in so that you can sit with good posture but also with ease we don't want to be sort of rigid and bolt upright now all of the things that we're doing today are suitable for all health conditions however i will offer some modifications here and there also, don't force yourself to do anything if it feels wrong in your body. So if your body's telling you, this doesn't feel right to me, then you can stop, you can do an easier version, but don't keep pushing through and forcing things because that is the way to injure yourself. So to get started, to sit in our chairs nicely, we're gonna have a little shuffle from one sitting bone to the other. Oh. And it also helps if you actually sit on your hands for a moment and feel those bony uh, sitting bones. The posh name for them is ischial tuberosities. And then we'll sit, so both the sitting bones are down on the chair. And then if you rock backwards and then rock forwards and find a point so that you can sit and it just feels as if your spine is like building one uh, building block on top of the other. And then you can imagine that the crown of your head, at the crown of your head is a thread that's drawing you up towards the ceiling. Or you can imagine that your head's a bit like a balloon and it's floating upwards. And then bring your shoulders up to your ears, take a breath in. And then let your shoulders slide down your back. Now obviously we sit down every day, you shouldn't need to be taught how to sit. But there are things that you can be thinking about so that you sit in the best way possible. And when we're sitting like this, when we're not slouched or slumped, it means that our lungs have got lots of space to expand. It means we're not kind of constricting ourselves by leaning forwards or letting our lower ribs dig into our lungs. And we've got lots of space to breathe easily. I'd like you to just focus for a moment on your breathing. So breathe right to the end of your inhale and breathe right to the end of your exhale. And it can help to put one hand on your chest and another on your tummy. So when we breathe in a relaxed way, it's the bottom hand that moves the most. So if you breathe in, your hand moves away from you. And as you breathe out, it comes back in again. When we're stressed, we breathe like this. And our shoulders and our chest muscles all get involved. So just shut your eyes if it feels comfortable and follow your own breathing for a moment. So I'll talk a lot about breathing and I'll also suggest when to breathe in and out but if it doesn't feel right for you then just make sure you are still breathing that you're not waiting to be told when to breathe in and out. Just following your breath right to the end of your inhale, right to the end of your exhale. And we're going to start to move our shoulders. So if you bring your shoulders up to your ears, take a breath in, roll your shoulders down your back, and then maybe as you're breathing out, roll them forwards and up again. So just go gently with your shoulders. They might creak and click a little bit. Oh, that's okay. We hold tension in our shoulders. And every time I start to move my shoulders, it makes me want to yawn. So if you feel yawny, that's absolutely fine. And then next time your shoulders come up to your ears, we'll move them in the other direction. So rolling forwards and down and then back up again. Doesn't matter which way you started with as long as you're doing the opposite direction now. Bring your shoulders up to your ears. Oh, 
and then just let them drop back down again. Okay, we're going to just do a little bit of work on our ankles now. So if you can, bring your right ankle onto your left knee and we're going to rotate the ankle in one direction. If this isn't comfortable, you can just rest your heel on the floor, stretch your leg out a bit and roll the ankle round that way. So we'll just do a few circles in one direction. Again, you might get a few clunks and clicks, but that's absolutely fine. We'll just go easy on ourselves. And then keep your ankle there, if that's how you're sitting, and just have your hands on your shin, and then roll your shoulders down your back so you sit up a little bit taller, and then breathe out and just sit forwards a little way. So it's a bit of a forward fold and you're going to feel a stretch in your right hip as well. And then breathe in and come back up again. Then we'll replace that foot. We'll do the same on the other side. So we're going to put the left ankle on the right knee and circle the ankle. We'll do that that way as well if you're not putting your ankle on your knee. Circle in one direction and then circle in the other. And then hold on to your shin, breathe in, sit up tall, breathe out, just rock forwards a little way. Keep your spine as long as possible. Think about growing up through the top of your head and then sitting back up and putting your foot on the floor. So if you're not putting your ankle on your knee and you just want to do a little forward bend, you can put your hands on your hips and just tip forward a little way. So I'm not rounding my back or collapsing, I'm keeping my shoulders down my back, drawing my chest forwards and just tipping forwards that way and then back up again. Right, now we're going to bring our feet together and then lift the toes up and turn the toes out. So you can see my toes, my feet have turned out a little. Then lift your heels up and turn your heels out. So your feet look kind of parallel with each other. And if you make sure you've got your knees above your heels, so they're not rocking in, they're not turning out, you've got everything as parallel as possible. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, push your heels into the floor. And you might just notice it makes you feel a weight all the way up your body. And then release and feel it all go a bit floppy again. And then we're going to push into the feet again as we're breathing out. And then release again. And then we're going to lift the heels up, bring the heels together and then bring the toes together. Right, we're going to do something that my children do in their karate class. And... Um, it's moving the toes and the heels out and we're going to see if we're going to pass our grading because this is a very important thing that they have to do to pass their karate grading. So first of all, we're going to lift the toes up, turn the toes out, lift the heels out, turn the heels out, then lift the toes out, turn them out again, lift the heels out, turn them out again, lift the toes out, turn them out again, and actually we just stay there. So we've got our feet wide, got our knees wide, we're going to push into the heels so we feel like we've got strong legs. At this point they would do several punches. They're not sitting on a chair when they do this either. Okay, then relax and we're going to lift the toes up, turn them in. Lift the heels up, turn them in. Lift the toes. Lift the heels, turn them in. Now if your heels touch, at this point you've passed your karate grading and then you bring your toes together. So we're going to do that again. If you didn't get your heels together that time, don't worry, we'll try it again. So lift toes up, then heels, then toes, then heels, then toes. Push into your heels and then relax, and then toes, then heels, then toes. See if you get your heels together, then toes together. Fantastic. Okay, right, now we get to use the golf ball. So get your golf ball and put it on the floor or ask someone friendly to put it down for you. Now, golf balls tend to escape. and My, my floor is not carpeted, so it, it could well roll away. But what we're gonna do with this ball is just massage the sole of the foot. It feels absolutely wonderful. You can get this golf ball in between your toes. Oh, always makes me feel quite relaxed and floaty. And then get it in the arch of your foot and around the edge and all the way to your heel. And if there's any little knots of tension that you didn't know about, there goes my golf ball, it's escaped. If there's any bits of knots of tension that you weren't sure were there, then you can work on those bits a little bit more. It doesn't have to be a golf ball, it can be a tennis ball, or you might have a special massage ball. Or you sometimes get those funny spiky plastic balls that come with your washing machine. Those work quite well as well. And then we're going to roll up and down the foot, if the ball will keep still. Oh, see 
if you can roll all the way from your toes to your heels and then there's a bit of ball control here as well then we'll just put the ball, ball on the floor between the feet put both feet on the floor and see if you can compare how one foot feels against the other foot and you might even notice a difference all the way up your leg then we'll take the ball over to the other side and have a little roll around there <sighs> always makes me yawn every time so have a good roll around so you can get in between the toes just keep rolling around all the way down to the heel and then we'll roll from the heel up to the toes and back again okay and that's it for the ball you can just roll it somewhere else now there it goes okay and then we'll put both feet down and uh, just have a little shuffle on your sitting bones again have your feet about about hip width apart and your knees over your heels think of that crown of the head going up to the ceiling shoulders relax down your back just see if you feel like you're sitting any differently now we're going to do some gentle twists now and I'd like you to try and keep your head in line with your your chest and your shoulders because sometimes when people twist they just turn their head and we don't want to just turn the head because the neck's quite mobile already we're trying to get the whole of our spine moving so if you slide one hand forwards and the other back, you'll move your shoulders round and then back to the front and then the other way and back to the front. And you can move with the breath if you want to. So maybe breathing out as you twist around and in as you come back. And then once you've got your shoulders moving and you know you're definitely moving your shoulders round, you can start to look over your shoulder and see if you can see even further. But don't force yourself. If you find yourself trying to push yourself around and break into a sweat, then go a bit more gently. So we're just turning in one direction and then in the other. Now we want to try and make sure we do everything equally on each side. So if you can remember what side you started on, then make sure you do your second side last and then we'll come back to facing the front again. We're going to... Um, bend to the side now. Now if you put your left hand on your left hip that's going to remind you to keep both your sitting bones on your chair because we don't want to be tipping over. So put your left hand on your hip, your right hand's going to be heavy and then as you breathe out just start to send your right hand towards the floor and with every out breath let yourself feel a bit heavier. If it all feels good try taking your left arm next to your ear so you breathe into your side ribs and you breathe out to see if you can sink down a bit more. Just check that your left hand, your top hand, is the arm you've got next to your ear. Because sometimes people do that and it looks really awkward and it doesn't feel nice either. Oh, and then we'll breathe in. We're going to come all the way back up again and um, have a shuffle on your sitting bones. One side of your body may now feel um, twice the length of the other. Then we'll put the right hand on the right hip, the left hand down by the side. And then every time you breathe out, allow that left hand to sink down a bit more. If it's all feeling good, we'll take the right arm next to the ear. Breathe into the side ribs. Breathe out to sink down a bit more. And then we'll inhale, come back to sitting up again. Hopefully you feel a bit more balanced on each side. Now I'm going to put the hands back on the legs. And as you breathe out, we're going to slide the hands forwards towards the knees. So you round your back, lower your head, send your shoulders forwards. And then as you breathe in, slide your hands back, roll your shoulders down your back and push your chest forwards. You keep your head looking forwards. Don't be tempted to take your head back. So we're breathing out. You can drop your head forwards if you want to. And then breathing in, take your hands back, roll your shoulders down your back, draw your chest forwards. Just going to keep doing this a few more times. Moving with your breath, as long as it makes sense to you. If you don't like moving with your breath, just keep your breath slow, relaxed. Don't need to hold your breath or wait or break into a sweat doing this. And then we'll find that neutral position where we're neither rounding forwards or arching our backs. Again, I'd just like to have another shuffle on my sitting bones to check that I'm sitting on them both equally. 
And now we're going to bring our hands behind us to the back of the chair, roll your shoulders down your back, draw your chest forward, keep your chin tucked into your chest and just see if you can open up, come into a bit more of a back bend there. And then we'll come back to sitting again. Okay, we're gonna bring our shoulders up to our ears, take a breath in, let them slide down the back and then draw forwards again. Just make some more circles. So this is similar to what we're doing at the start of the class, but we can really exaggerate it now and involve your back a bit more. And then we'll go in the other direction. And then let them slide down the back. Okay, right. We're going to do a bit of work on our wrists and then on a bit more on our shoulders. So bring your hands together and you're going to open your hands towards you as if you're opening a book and then bring the backs of your hands together so your fingers are facing in towards your chest and the backs of your hands are completely together then take your fingers to the floor then away from you and then all the way back up to the ceiling again. So you might find that your wrists won't let you get the whole of the backs of your hands together and that's fine just go with what feels right again don't force anything that doesn't want to happen. So we're going to do that again, fingers up to the ceiling, open your hands towards you like a book, backs of the hands together, fingers towards the floor, fingers away from you, and then you're opening up your hands away from you and then back together again. So you can circle your hands around and then when your fingers next come up towards the ceiling we'll go in the opposite direction. And we'll just do one more of those and then let your arms drop down. Now, this sometimes does people's heads in. So let's just see how we go with it. What we're going to do is we're going to have the palm facing up to the ceiling and imagine you're reaching forwards to take something off someone and then you turn your fingers behind you, bring it behind your back and then back towards the front again. So your fingers are facing forwards and then you turn them back behind you and then behind your back you turn them round. So you're making a figure of eight shape by your side. Now if you haven't got this exactly right, don't worry, just do your own version but it should feel really nice in your shoulder joint. So we'll do one more on that side and then we'll do it on the other. So we're lifting palm up to the ceiling, reaching forwards to accept something, taking it behind our backs. So reaching forwards, then turn your fingers behind you, take behind your back. We'll just do that a couple more times on this side. And now we're gonna do both hands together. So sometimes this makes more sense to people. So we're gonna start both palms up to the ceiling, reach forwards, and it's as if you're gathering things in towards you and then taking them away. And then the fun starts when you do two sides going in opposite directions. So let's give that a go. So we've got one hand facing forwards, one hand facing back, and we're going to see if we can do these figures of eight going in opposite directions. And if that's not making sense, it doesn't matter. Okay, oh, and then bring your shoulders up to your ears, let them drop down, rest your hands on your legs. Now, we're going to do a version of a sun salutation, but sitting in the chair. Um, sun salutations are normally very dynamic yoga practices where you move with your breath, but this is just a sitting down one. But if at any point your shoulders feel uncomfortable or if any part of you feels uncomfortable, you can stop and rest. You don't have to force yourself to carry on. Also, if you've got high blood pressure, then you'll find that having your arms above your heart level, so above your shoulders, is going to um, put a bit too much strain on you. So don't hold it for too long if you are lifting your arms above your head. Um, we move with the breath. If it doesn't make sense to you to do that, just keep breathing at your own natural, relaxed breathing rate. So, let's just start by sitting quietly. So we've got both our feet on the floor, got that head, crown of the head going up to the ceiling. We're imagining that our head's like a balloon and 
Just take a moment to connect with your breathing, slow, relaxed breath. And then we're going to take a breath in, sit up nice and tall. And then as you breathe out, lean your elbows on your knees. And then on your next in breath, we're going to sit up tall and raise our arms overhead. And then as you breathe out, sway to one side. Then breathe in to bring the arms overhead and out to sway to the other side. In to bring the arms ahead and out to come forwards and lean your elbows on your knees. And just take a couple of breaths there. And now we're going to breathe in with the arms in front. Breathe out to twist to the right. Breathe in to come back to the centre. Out to twist to the left. Breathe in to come back to the centre. Breathe out to take your arms wide and turn your palms to the ceiling. Breathe in, lift your arms overhead and then breathe out to bring your elbows onto your knees. Take a rest there. Then we're going to breathe in, take the arms out all the way overhead, breathe out to bring your hands to the centre of your chest. So that's one round of a seated sun salutation and you can adapt it. So if it felt like you had your arms out to the side or above your head for too long then you can bring them down anytime you want to. I'm going to talk you through it again because it always makes more sense when you've done it more than once. So let's just connect in with our breathing again. Take a breath in and then breathe out and fold forwards. Then we're going to breathe in and raise the arms overhead. Breathe out, side bend to the right. Breathe in, back up to the centre. Breathe out, side bend to the left. Breathe in, up to the centre. Breathe out to lean your elbows on your knees. And then we're going to breathe in, bring the arms up in front. Breathe out to take the arms to the right. In, back to the centre. Out, take them to the left. In, back to the centre. You can rest here if you want to. Just take a couple of breaths here. Then breathe in. Take your arms out to the side and then breathe out, turn your palms to the ceiling. Breathe in, bring your arms overhead and then breathe out to bring your hands to your heart centre. So it was a slightly different version then because it gave you a little rest in the middle. And you can adapt it and change it in any way that makes sense for you. Okay, so bringing your hands back down onto your knees, we're going to come back to focusing on our breathing. And I'd like to talk to you about a breathing practice that I absolutely love, which is called alternate nostril breathing. Now, at this point, if you're tired of sitting upright, you might just want to shuffle backwards into your chair a bit so that you can lean backwards. You can have a cushion and that might help you to sit up tall a little bit more. I'm actually going to come a bit closer to the camera so I can explain alternate nostril breathing to you and um, you can see what I'm doing a bit more clearly. So... Um, when we use alternate nostril breathing, what we're doing is we're blocking one nostril and breathing through the clear one. This only works if you don't have a cold. So if you've got a blocked nose, it's not going to work for you. If you're blocking one side and you're breathing in like that, it's not a very relaxed way of breathing. And we want to breathe so that it flows effortlessly. It should not be an effort to breathe. So I'd like you to make sure you're sitting comfortably. And there's two ways of doing this. You can either use two fingers or you can use one hand. So with the two finger version, you just use one finger, breathe in, and then breathe out. And then you swap over, breathe in, and breathe out. And it's your natural relaxed breathing rate. It's not the speed that I'm saying it. It's not a set number of seconds. It's what works right for you. The other way of doing it is to just use one hand, you'll, um, and it, traditionally it's the right hand. So we put the right thumb on the right nostril, and then this finger goes against the left nostril, and these two fingers either go between your eyebrows or you tuck them into the palm of your hand, and then you can use your left hand to support your elbow. 
And it's really important that you sit so that you are as level and symmetrical as possible. Your hand comes to meet your face. You don't turn your head or sort of round your back so that if your spine is nice and straight, then your lungs have got that space to inflate. So when you bring your hand to your face, it's the same thing. You're, you're making that connection between your thumb and your finger and your nostrils and you just use one side to block at a time. So you can block the right nostril, breathe in and out through the left and then block the nest, left nostril, breathe in and out through the right. And it's supposed to balance us, balance our energies, balance our thoughts and it slows your breathing down because when we breathe slowly we're breathing in that the most relaxed possible way that we can so i'm going to stop talking for a moment and let you explore that breathing practice And we're going to finish with a relaxation session. So make sure that you feel warm enough because we generated a bit of heat doing the, um, the, the chair yoga. You might now want to put some socks on or put another layer on. And again, you can sit back in your chair so that you feel totally comfortable. And we're going to do a progressive muscular relaxation. I'm going to go back to sit in the chair so that you can see what I'm doing. And what we do with a progressive muscular relaxation is that we tense and release different muscle groups. So starting with your feet, if you clench your toes, now if you're prone to cramping, don't overdo it because you might find that you cramp up a bit. So just screw your toes up gently if you're prone to clamp, uh, cramping and then release. And now push your heels away, so lift your toes up, feel that tension and release. Now, clench your buttocks as tight as you can, feel that tension and then release. Now leaning back in your chair, push your back into your chair so you feel your tummy muscles tense up and then release. Bring your shoulders up to your ears as high as you can. Hold that tension and release. Now go into your hands. Make fists with your hands. Then release. Clench your fingers again, but now bring your hands up to your shoulders. Hold that tension and release. Let your arms flop back down. Rest your hands somewhere comfortable on your legs. Now grit your teeth as tight as you can, so you really feel it in your jaw, then release. Now you've got to imagine no one's looking at you, screw your face up as tight as you can, and then release. And now raise your eyebrows as high as you can, and release. And now we're going to tense the whole body up. And then release and you can relax back in your chair, have your hands somewhere comfortable on your legs and go back to focusing on your breathing. And if you'd like to, you can just sit there quietly just for a short while, enjoy being still and I hope you feel a lot more loose and relaxed than you did at the start of the practice. So thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.